Greetings all and welcome to this hacking session. What I want to do right now is spend a few minutes and talk a little bit about the testing code in the Robocode PMJ to Cruiser project um, and how you can run tests using Maven as well as run the code coverage tool in Maven. Now none of this, uh, you can always of course run the test cases from within Eclipse which I've shown you how to do before. Um, and um, that's a good thing to do, but it's also nice to be able to, to, from the command line, run all of your quality assurance tools, right? Including check style, PMD, find bugs, um, and so forth. Okay, so the first thing is, for your competitive robot assignment, you're gonna have to write some tests for Robocode. And we've, uh, this sample project kind of shows you how you might go, might go about doing that, or, or should go about doing that. The basic idea is in your source test Java directory, I've written three tests. And all of these tests work by extending this class called robot testbed, which is um, going to be defined as long as you downloaded the robot testing jar file, which we talked about in a prior screencast. Um, and so when you extend this class, there's going to be a set of methods that you override in order to specify the kind of behavior that you need. In addition, you need to always run your tests with the robocode.home system property defined. Okay, otherwise this thing's gonna kind of break. Um, I looked around to look for Javadocs for robot testbed. It's kind of inconvenient. They don't give it to you as part of the robocode distribution. If any of you robocode developers out there are listening to this, that's a bug. Please fix it. It'd be really nice. Um, but at any rate, you can Google on robottestbed.java and find the source code very easily. So I think actually this is one of those um, use the source Luke moments where simply finding the source code and reading it and looking at the Java.com comments associated with it will um, help you understand what's going on. It's not that complicated. Actually, I was the one that wrote this class. So if I can write it, um, you know, anybody can understand it. It's not that, not rocket science. Um, and even just looking at these example, three examples might be enough for you to, to use it. So the basic notion is you're going to override these methods, get robot name, and, I, and you can go through um, the, the Javadocs for these test classes because I try to explain from a user side standpoint what's, what's going on. So you specify the number of rounds you want to run. This um, this is uh, test, yeah, test to cruiser firing. So you always specify the two robots involved or the, the number of robots involved. Um, after each turn ends, what I do is check the power of all the bullets because what I want to find out is whether the cruiser is a robot that uses proportional firing. Okay, and so this is a test that doesn't, doesn't exactly guarantee that it's using proportional firing based upon the distance of the detected enemy robot. It's looking for a looser condition, which is that simply uh, the cruiser is um, firing with differing uh, levels of variability of bullet power, okay? Mainly because that was pretty easy to test and I didn't want to get this code to be really long. In, in your own unit test, you probably want to go into more detail to really check to see that things are going on, um, going on the way they, they should be. The other thing I want you to note is that I'll refer to in the assignment as behavioral test versus acceptance test. This I'm calling a behavioral test because you're trying to assess that the behavior of your robot is, uh, you know, with respect to firing, targeting, movement is what you've actually specified it should be. Okay. Acceptance test is where you're testing to see that your robot can uh, beat another robot reliably across a, a number of uh, different rounds, and we'll see that as well. So we've got this, and then the way that the unit test works is that you, you override these, these methods up here, and there could be potentially others that you override um, their default behavior to provide the kind of test details that you need. So you can look at the robot, robot testbed.java file to see all of the possible overridable methods. And then on battle, comp on battle completed is the method that you override where you put your J unit assertions. Okay, so whenever the battle is completed, you get this, um, battle completed event which you can look at or what I've done in this case is I've uh, I've defined these variables so I'm kind of gathering state information about the set of battles as we go through 
and then at the conclusion of the battle, or as, through, as we go through all the rounds, I gather this state information about what happened during the round, and then I assert that I got all of the different firepower levels that I want, and um, and if all of these assertions are true, then the unit test passed. Now I've commented out this thing here. I'll show you that in a second. I just want to illustrate what happens when a unit test fails. Okay. Second unit test is called test de cruiser move. So this is a movement behavioral test. We want to see that it moves to all the four corners. Again, we're going to override the robot test bed. And we've got these, uh, these variables to check that are set to false initially and then set to true if we find during a given turn that we got to a corner. And then at the end, we just checked assert that it's visited all of the four corners. Okay. The final unit test is, or the final test, I should say, is a acceptance test. And the idea is that here we're going to make sure that, that the cruiser can always beat the sitting duck robot. Okay, not a real, you know, um, strenuous test. Okay, but you're going to see, as you start to think about how many robots you can beat, right, which is part of the competitive robot assignment, what you can start to imagine is that you pursue a certain strategy and you beat four of the robots that you want to beat. And then you modify that strategy in order to beat the fifth robot. Well, maybe that modification could lead to you losing against one of your first four robots that you were formerly beating. That's called a regression. And that's what's so awesome about having acceptance tests. You set up an acceptance test against each of the robots that you are uh, trying to beat or you think you've been you've been able to beat and then you keep modifying your code keep running these tests and if you make any modifications to your code that results in your robot now behaving differently and not being able to beat one of those former robots you find out right away okay so that's pretty cool so we do the same kind of thing and and this is um, where on the battle completed, we're not looking at kind of some state variables that we, we stored otherwise. We, we are actually looking at this battle completed event and we're parsing it to, to find out whether or not the cruiser was the winner of all the given rounds. Okay. Um, again, you can use the source to go in and find out the structure of this battle completed event, what are the methods and, and state information associated with it. Um, and it's kind of fun. Okay, and then here's all of the different, I, I think in this case, yeah, I've, I've overridden, I've shown you all of the different methods that can be overridden, I, I believe, um, and their default values so that you can, um, you know, if you decide you want to customize some of these other things, you, you've seen them. Okay, so that's how these test cases work. And um, as before, the way that you're going to actually run the tests is by doing maven minus d robocode home equals users johnson or whatever your home directory for robocode is and then you just say test and then what that's going to do is run your test cases and you see in the normal situation hopefully that all the tests are going to pass okay right so build success all the tests pass now the question is what happens when the tests fail so let's try to find where i had that code okay so what i'm going to do here just to make it really easy and quick for a test to fail is I'm going to have an assertion which is guaranteed to fail. Okay, so if we go back to our um, command line and run this again, let's see what happens. Okay, so we run, run, run. Oops, test fail. Run, run, run. And at the end, you're going to see now the build fails. Oh, junk. The f we find out the test that failed was test to cruiser firing, um, and so forth. But you may want more information about this. And the way that you do that pretty easily is by going to um, the target directory and then going into, where is it? Going into uh, sh Surefire Reports. And we know it's test to cruiser firing, so we double click on this and a window pops up someplace different. But anyway, you get this text file that gives you more details about what exactly happened when the test fails. Okay, so there are JUnit reports and, and better ways, more nicely formatted ways to get the, this test failure information. Um, I did a little bit of you know research on how to make Maven do it, and it looks like Maven doesn't do it very well without a certain amount of backflips. And so I'm going to um, just let you look at these text files um, to to look at these these errors. You can see the XML ones, which provide you system properties and, and so forth. Okay, but the main thing is 
you get build failures, you find out what the test is, and then you can look up and get more details about that failure. Or you can do these test failures, you can, you can do it in Eclipse, which is probably the better way to actually diagnose the problems associated with your test failures. And then you use this command line thing just to make sure everything's okay, you know, um, when you, uh, at the end of the day or, or, you know, periodically. Okay, so that's that. Let's now comment this out so that, um, so that we don't have any test failures. And then let's go back. And now I want to show you how to get your code coverage. Okay, So to do that, we run the, the verify goal. So oftentimes I call that the target. That's kind of a leftover because I'm a, I've used ant for such a long time. But really, I think these are called goals or life cycle phases or something like that. But um, anyway, so we're going to run the verify goal or the verify phase. That's going to run the tests, but this time, because we have Jococo, these tests, this test ex executions are going to be instrumented, and we're going to be able to find out exactly which parts of our system um, actually ran. Now, um, it's a little irritating. Now, we get a, a find bugs error, okay, and I'll show you exactly why. It's not going to modify, it's not going to be a problem for our code coverage. But what I did in order to get some interesting code coverage is I have this um, noop method here, which calls system.exit. And that kind of illustrates find bugs errors. But it's also a method that's never called by any of the tests, because no, nobody calls this particular method. So let's find out how we actually learn about code coverage. And the way we're going to do that is we go back into our target directory. This time, we have to go into the site subdirectory. And then within the site subdirectory, we go into the Jococo subdirectory. And then we can click on index.html. And what we get is this little, much more nicely formatted display that shows you here's the package, and we see the coverage level. Here's the class, and we see the coverage level. And then we get all the way down here, and we can see that um, you know, the noop method was never called. In fact, you click on that. Now you get the actual view of the source code. If it's in green, the test cases exercise that code. If it's in red, the test net cases never got there. OK? So um, that's, I think, enough to get you started. So run test cases to find both behavioral and acceptance tests. Um, use code coverage to check to make sure that your testing strategy is comprehensive. And have fun.